Roar Nation, Promise Keepers is back July 31st, 2020. Estimated 80,000 men will be gathering at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Speakers are going to rock the house. It's going to be a full lineup. And on top of that, worship is going to be amazing. Why am I telling you so far in advance? Because tickets are on sale and they're slowly selling out. So that being said, I hope I see you there. I am planning on going. Go to promisekeepers.org to get info and tickets. Again, go to promisekeepers.org. See you there. Welcome to Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You, the podcast that focuses on Christians that are active in everyday life. Join in as we speak to everyone from successful business owners to educators to athletes about their faith and how it helps them reach out and revolutionize those around them to do the same. And now get ready to roar with your host, the voice of manifestation, John Fuller. Hey, Roar Nation, John Fuller here, and I want to welcome you to Are You Real? Episode 181. All right, today is a kind of a special uh, what do I want to say? Show for me. And the reason I say that, I actually got to tell our guest that one of my all-time favorite songs that has just ministered to me for years is a song that I actually listened to that she uh, sang and wrote. So I'm excited to introduce that to you guys. We'll be talking about that a little bit. And also one of her uh, books that is out that we'll be talking about as well. So that being said, I want to welcome Morgan Harper Nichols. You ready to roar, Morgan? I am. Thank you so much for having me. I'm yeah. so honored. Thank you. Absolutely. So, Maury, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so our audience kind of knows who you are and what you do? Yes. Yeah, so, I am a writer and an artist. And in terms of writing, I do mostly poetry, but I also write songs and other things. And then in terms of art, I do mostly visual art, but also music and so yeah it's um i i'm 29 i turned 30 in a week and this past decade for me has just been going through the highs and lows of like what am i supposed to do (laughs) you know like like i feel like i have these these gifts these things i've been given to create but yeah that's really hard to figure out you know how to how do you do that as like a a sustainable thing that can pay the bills but it's also something that you just love and feel called to do so yeah my story is a lot of that lots of highs and lows lots of pivots over here pivots over there um but yeah as of right where i am right now mostly what i've been doing is Honestly, the same thing that I've been lo- loved to do when I was five years old, and that is draw pictures and tell stories with art. Um, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia area. I'm, I was a homeschool preacher's kid, and I'm very, I, I was very blessed to have had an upbringing where um, creativity was very much so encouraged. Like, I have distinct moments with both my mom and my dad and them like sitting me down telling me like God made you to create like you Mm. were meant to create like use your art to love other people and like I know not everybody has that so I I'm just so grateful for that and that was a huge so yeah I, I I would say that I'm in a very very good place right now in the sense of like even though there's still lots of uncertainty it's still like wow like this thread has been here all along like i can see like through everything i've been through i'm like i the fact that i get the opportunity to share with others in this capacity it's just become yeah a huge part of my life so i i love people's stories and a huge inspiration for most of my work if not all of my work are other stories that people share with me and the stories that I encounter. So you'll see that word a lot in my, in my work and and I, how I describe my work um, are stories. And I think that stories can just tell us so much about faith and about faithfulness and grace and all the things. So yeah, that's a little bit of who I am. (laughs) I wrote this down. I I really, I love the quote that you just said, you don't realize it, but uh, what your parents said, you said, use your art to love people. And I think that's powerful because what your parents were inspiring you to do was to use your gift that the Lord gave you to love people through it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's that, wow. Yeah. That's powerful. That's so right. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't you talk a little bit about um, how you stepped into writing and music? It sounds like you've been doing it obviously for a long time, but at some point you kind of pivoted <laughs> I just jacked that word up. <laughs> but as you pivot into that, what did that kind of look like? I know this is what I tell people now. I'm, I'm going, I'm in my forties, early forties. And what I've realized is, is you spend your twenties trying to figure out kind of what you like and who you are. And I don't feel like you really start hitting your stride until really you're in your thirties. And then you don't really yeah. start making money until you're for most <laughs> at all. Some people get lucky, but until you're like in your mid thirties, early forties, and then all of a sudden it just yeah. like kind of takes off. But there's a lot of mm-hmm. years there of just really, and, and I think you're experiencing that obviously or have is just trying to juggle like, which direction do I go with this? Cause there's so many different mm-hmm. avenues, but I want to back yeah. up 10 years. How did you start? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, 10 years is a, is a good time mind to look at because um, so, you know, this is 2020 and Instagram was launched in 2010. And that was a huge turning point for me once social media started to become like, you know, on our phones. And it was something that a lot of people had every day. So I was 20 years old when this was happening. So I was like the target demographic. So just like a lot of other people my age, I was just like, yeah, like how can I use this space to create? So, you know, I had had been doing various things over the years, like doing music, you know, being a preacher's kid, you know, singing in church and leading worship and all these things. Um, I've been doing lots of creative things, but it, it, it always just felt kind of scattered. And like, you know, I went to college, I started in music and then I switched to English and I was just kind of like, okay, like I'm creative, but like, that's like really hard to figure out. Like, what do you even do with that? Like, where do I even go? And I always kind of struggled because I, I'm not the most like, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm really energetic in like a conversation like this because it's like, ah, this is like things I love to talk about. But in most like everyday settings, especially back then, I didn't have a lot of confidence and I didn't have, I didn't feel like I was somebody that belonged on stage. Like I had the performance aspect of creativity. So that was a struggle because a lot of the people that I saw that were successful in the arts were people who had like these big personalities and like they just seem to like come alive in front of like a room of people and I'm like I'm terrified in a room of people. I was like, what am I supposed to do? So for me, social media was kind of like a like a safe place that I was like, okay, I can share here, but like the pressure didn't feel as intense, if that makes sense. So um yeah, I really just spent a lot of time experimenting with photography and and I would write devotionals and like I started an online magazine and an interesting thing happened was that for those first I would say four to five years or so almost everything I was sharing online I typically would share it um, under a name that wasn't my name I would share it like as like a different on a different account like why'd you do that I think it was just that same thing of just like I don't know how to like put my face out there. Like, I don't know how to like, I was like, I love to create, but I just really, really struggled with like, with like sharing like my story, I guess. I think in many ways I felt like my story wasn't interesting and that people wouldn't care about it. Um, Cause like I mentioned before, you know, on the, on the spectrum of, of, you know, childhood and things that people experience, like I feel like I had a pretty good childhood in the sense of like, I can look back and see, I'm like, I know how that stuff shaped me. Like, I'm grateful for it. And like, I'm so glad that like my gifts were encouraged and cultivated because that doesn't happen for a lot of people. However, at the same time, I was just like, but I guess in comparison to others, I haven't really been through anything. Like, I, I don't know if I have anything to share. So I think that was probably some of it. I just felt like I I wasn't qualified or or worthy of sharing my story, but like I still was sharing my story through what I made. I didn't realize it then. And um, so yeah, I, I kind of kept that up for about four or five years. And I just would try different things and different blogs and I loved it. I loved it. I found a lot of joy in being able to share with people. But why don't you talk that. a little bit? I got a lot of questions for you on that because oh, yeah, I think you really totally. 
diving into a lot of good stuff, but why don't you kind of talk about what you felt passionate about and how you kind of experimented with stuff and maybe kind of tell me about like what you didn't like and what you didn't like, because I, I think that's where a lot yeah. of young people don't realize they think, okay, I'm 20. I, I think my daughter kind of struggles with this. Sometimes she's um, 20 going on 21. We have these conversations and I remember being 20 feeling like, well, I'm supposed to have it all figured out. And by the time I'm 25, I want to be a millionaire. Yeah. I'm in business. I love business. So I'm like, I have to yeah. hit, it'd be like you said, I have to hit a hit song by I'm 25. Yeah. Right? Yes. And, and you have all these expectations, but when in the fact is, is you really just have to try a lot of different stuff yes. and, and be like, I like this. I don't like that. And what you end up finding is, is you morph into something because you take all these different dots. And then all of a sudden you, you kind of paint your own picture and you're like, Oh, this is what I like because you've tried yeah. so many different things. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, and I love how you said the word try. I think that is like, you know, when I look back and I'm like, how was I able to just like keep going? I was like, I think even though despite, you know, all the pressure and self doubt and the anxiety of growing up and everything, I will say that for me, for the most part, I haven't been afraid to try, especially when it comes to creativity. Like, I I mean, literally, if you walk down the aisle of like any craft store, I've been through the whole store. I, I've done quilting. I've done jewelry making. Like, I was just like, yeah, let me try this. Let me try that. Like, maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Like, yeah, maybe it's an Etsy jewelry shop. I'm not sure. So I would try all these different things. Um, however, the caveat was that as long as I could kind of control it online, if that makes sense, like on my blog, in my space. So I wasn't as prone to want to try things like, like, oh yeah, let me go like audition for local theater or something. Like that sounds terrifying. Um, but I would, yeah. So it was very much so like, mm, I, okay, I'll try, but within the realm of where I still feel comfortable that makes sense yeah. so I think that's what it was it was like in, in a way you know in, in many ways it was a good thing social media because it was just for me because it was like yeah now I have the space to share and like kind of work on developing this my voice and my creative confidence and stuff like that however you know the downside of it is just that as we all learn in life, it's like, you just don't get to stay in your comfort zone. Like yeah. at some point you're going to be pushed out of it. Um, circumstances what, are different for everyone. I'm but curious. What was, what yeah. was that for you? What was you, uh -huh. you said for a while you stayed in your comfort zone. Where did you finally get pushed out of that? Yes. It was when I wrote an incredibly vulnerable poem that I almost didn't share and it ended up going viral. <laughs> That was the moment. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I guess I can't control it anymore. This, this poem is going out way beyond where I thought it would go. Um, it barely made it outside my journal. So that was it. That, that was in that, yeah, because I, in all of this creativity and sharing, kind of like I mentioned before, you know, I was struggling to share my, my story and my voice. So, I didn't know it then, but I think what was happening was like, even though I was struggling to share, like it was bubbling up inside of me and at some point it was going to come out. So it came out on one rainy night in 2016, like I think it was like November 15th or something. And I was sitting there. Um, my husband was working in construction at the time and I was sitting at home in our one bedroom apartment and I think it was just sort of like a little mini quarter life crisis. I was like, I'm 26. It's, you know, in music world, there are people who have hit songs, you know, when they're 18, 19, 20, I'm like, I'm late. I, I don't, I think this is it. I think I have to give up. So in true Morgan fashion, I wrote a poem about giving up on creativity and I took a picture of it and I, I, I got ready to share it on Instagram. And then I, at the last second, I just like, just totally chickened out. And I was like, no, I can't share it there. And I ended up sharing it on Pinterest. And I completely forgot about it. Months later, I started getting messages from a whole bunch of people that I didn't know. 
that were like, thank you so much for this poem. Like, I went through the worst year ever last year and it really spoke to me. And I was like, whoa, okay. I was, I guess it's so, it was intimidating and I didn't really know what to do with the whole viral thing. Cause I was just like, things go viral all the time. I'm like, maybe this will just blow over and we can all just move on. Um, and it's not really a thing. However, it became a thing when people started sharing their stories from, when people started sharing their stories with me about what they had been through because they had read something about what I had been through. And even though I felt like what I had been through on the scale of issues in the world wasn't that great, it had still impacted me. And it still made me feel in that moment like I was a failure. And it made me question my worth. And it made me question like, like all this, all these years, like my parents have been encouraging me. Like I've been, I feel like I literally have been called to create and here I am. And like, where's the fruit? Like, where is it? Where's, where are the flowers? What's springing up? So yeah, it was, it was a very humbling moment because it was like, while I was still being cynical with this poem getting out there and thinking like, oh, there's nothing here. Like, this is just whatever. These stories I was receiving were from people who just had been through things that I couldn't even imagine going through. And many of them were like half my age, like teenagers yeah. sending me messages like this, what, this happened last year. And I was just like, whoa, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's, I was like, I don't know if this is a career or what, but I was like, I can at least just write for these people. So I literally just started like encouraging them and writing back to them like on Instagram direct messages. And then that following October, it took from that January 2017 to October 2017, I had this moment and I was just like, you know what, I've been... I've been inspired by people's stories all along. I was like, I'm just literally going to write for people's stories one person at a time. So I announced it and I was like, I would love to write for your story. I will make artwork and I will send it to you uh, for free. I will oh, share powerful. your story. Your story. I mean, they can share their story, but I was like, I, I'm not going to share your story. You keep it private. Um, it's just a way of like honoring you and encouraging you to just keep going on the journey. And when I posted that, I woke up the next morning to, hundreds of messages from people <laughs> I didn't know. And yeah. they said a lot of things like, Hey, I heard from somebody, like I saw some posts that said like, you're, you're writing, like you're making free artwork for people's stories. Like, Hey, here's, here's my story. Here's what I've been through. And I, I looked up at the clock and I had been sitting there for like five hours, just like writing for people's stories. And I had, I had not done that kind of like creativity since childhood. Childhood. Like, even though I love to create, like, I get in my head, like, I think like, oh, well, is this a hit? Is this that? Is this, you know, thinking all these things. And in that moment, I just, you know, I don't even know how to explain it other than God, <laughs> like, Spirit, Holy Spirit, just like, whoosh, just like pouring out. And it was in those moments where I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. Like, that's what I'm going to do. Like, from this moment forward, every song I write, everything, like, it's about people's stories. And, yeah, so that was a, that was a huge turning point. It was receiving. And I, and I, and I believe that that can happen for anyone. Um, I think even if we know, like, deep within, like, yeah, okay, I'm, you know, I'm worthy and all this, sometimes it can be really hard to just, like, understand that, and I really think that for me, and I think this happens for others, that God can really use other people's stories. And oftentimes other people's artwork or, or, or letters from other people, emails from other people to really wake us up and say like, oh, wait a second. Like, this is not just about me. Like, this is so much greater than me. So, so yeah, that was a pretty, pretty big moment. <laughs> I want to tell you, you know, as just listening to you and just kind of summarizing for the audience, just want to say, if, if people recognize this, but in a moment of vulnerability of where you had self doubt, you didn't feel worthy and you were being raw and authentic of your struggle and through your pain, <clears throat> you ended up finding purpose. Mm. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that that is a society we don't want to talk about hurt or pain or a lot of times people want to mask it with drugs or alcohol or, or whatever because they don't want to deal with it. When essence, what I have found doing hundreds of interviews and just talking to people that, and even myself, is that in a moment of pain and of really searching and just being honest, all of a sudden it's like we have that Holy Spirit moment where the Lord speaks to us and we find wow, this isn't about me. This is about other people. And we're allowed to use that gift inside of us to serve others just like Christ served. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's so hard, but it's like, wow, it's often in those low moments where we realize that, you know, and it's, it's in those places where we're just like, I don't know how to, where to go from here. Like the only way is up from this point you know, that's where we start to look around and we see like, maybe, maybe, well, maybe that's it. It's just up from here. Maybe I can just try to, you know, just focus on serving others right now. Or I can just like try to just use what I have to make something. And it's through that, that we actually start to build and to grow. So yeah, it's hard. And, and, you know, it's, it's scary to think, sit here and think, I'm like, Oh, well, what am I going to go do next time? You know, it's like, yeah. what's up ahead. But at the same time, it's like, you have to remember, like, but think about all the times you overcame though. Like think about all the things that you've been through. It's like, I know it seems so scary to think about the future and what, what could possibly go wrong, but you do have this whole you know, all these decades behind you, however old you are, where you can see like, well, you know, I, I have grown though. Like I am stronger. Like I am resilient. I do have endurance. So, yeah. so I'm kind of curious. You, you mentioned a lot of stuff previous that I just want to ask you about. You know, you talked about you didn't feel like you had a story to tell. You didn't feel like people, you made the comment, you said, I don't feel like people cared about my story. But in essence, I think people do because you had the same struggles no matter what we've been through. I think the lie is, is that we haven't been through enough. But when in fact, if you really boil it down, really what is everybody doing with? Self-doubt, anxiety, no self-worth. Mm -hmm. Like it, it all boils down to those things. Now, maybe some have been through some horrific stuff. Others of us haven't. But if you boil it down, that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And... And I think that's, I think we all do have a story. And sometimes it is, like you said, it's telling other people's stories or encouraging them. But through going through all that, do you feel like you have found a voice? I have. I definitely have. Because even amidst starting to receive people's stories, so people can, you know, to this day, I still do this. People can Instagram me, email me their stories. And I just randomly scroll through and I just stop on it, stop on someone's story. And there have been so many times where I start reading someone's story and they live in a different part of the world. They're different age than me, like completely different, like life situation from where I am right now. And as I start to read it and as I get down to the bottom, I'm like, Oh, I feel that too. I'm like, what she's talking about that unknown, that, that restlessness. I'm like, I know that I'm like, I do not, I, I'm like, I have no connection to her story in the sense of like, you know, at face value, I'm like, we don't look alike, we're not the same age, we don't live in the same place, we don't have the same story, like, all that part's different, but I'm like, that's just on the surface, like, that's just skin deep, and it's like, once you go deeper, you start to see, like you said, and so yeah, it was literally, and so, I mean, at this point, I'm going on three years of doing this project, and, um, you know, I used to do it every day, but, you know, now you know, life has just gotten a little bit busier and I have an eight month old. And, and um, so, but I try to make sure at least once a week that I sit there and I just open my email. And even if I just respond to one person, then that's what I do because it keeps me so, so grounded because it's so, for me, like, I, I think sometimes maybe people can, can struggle with like, you know, and it leans one way or the other, maybe like, pride and then you know false humility like I for me I've always been like so afraid of being prideful that I go in the opposite direction false, yeah. <laughs> yeah to the whole false humility thing like oh, I'm an anybody so I can I can go there real quick and now I'm starting to like be more aware of it and so yeah I've just been trying to be more intentional even outside of like 
Instagram and email, I've been trying to like be more intentional in my real life, which is like really just listening to people in my life. You know, maybe people that I feel like I already know, you know, family members and close friends. I'm like, oh, I already know their story. I already know what they've been through. But really just like, just two days ago, I had a moment like that. I was with some friends who I've known for a long time. And I was just, and they, and someone said something and I just like kind of probed the question a little bit. And like, it ended up spiraling a whole conversation, a whole part of their life that I didn't even know about. And I was just like, oh, like that happens in real life too. And, you know, as an introvert, sometimes like I'm so kind of caught up in like, oh, this is, oh, I can't wait to just like get home and go to bed. I'm so tired. Like I'm so caught up in that. But it's like, if I could just like learn how, it's so simple. It's like, this is what Jesus did. Like just be present with people and just see like, what right now like what's the conversation right now like how can i just be present with this person right now with love so yeah sometimes that comes out as artwork but i'm learning now that it's it's also just in regular everyday life in real conversation we have so many opportunities to go deeper and discover just how much how how much more we have in common than what's on the surface so i want to ask you this talking about going deeper during your ups and downs of writing and singing and just your career, what was, I, I like to talk about like, it couldn't be worse than this moment because <laughs> they're my favorite yes, because that's yes. where God shows up the brightest. Yeah. And I'd like, if you have a story where you just were like, okay, I'm ready to throw in the towel because mm. this isn't going to work. And then God does something and you're like, Oh my gosh, you're so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for me, it was that moment that I wrote that poem because the poem says, when you start to feel like things should have been better this year, remember the mountains and valleys that brought you here. So you had mentioned that whole thing about like, you said 25 and I was like, yeah, that was kind of true for me in the sense of like, I felt like 25 was kind of like the moment where I'm like, if it's not, if it's not, you know, growing by this point, you know, you, you're kind of like, you need to quit. So I was 26 by this point, um, almost 27. And I started like giving it an extra year. <laughs> it just sounds like, let me just see. I was like, maybe because of my, my, my logic here <laughs> and logic in air quotes was that I was like, okay, maybe it just wasn't music though. I was like, because I had the wonderful opportunity to like record an album, which I love to this day. It's so, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't paying the bills. Like, it, is that it the one that I mentioned? Yes. Yes. Okay. It was like, it didn't, you know, with, with a lot of the metrics of music, it's like, okay, you got to like chart on radio and you got to like do tours and all this. And it's just a lot of artists out there who just, you know, it, it's hard. It's really hard to yeah. like create a full-time income out of music. So for me, I was like, and I was kind of getting to that point at 25. So I was like, all right, well, maybe it wasn't music then. Maybe it's something else. So I had spent that year of 26, uh, age 26, just like, like, just, <laughs> just like taking, like, I guess, like the scraps of my dreams and just like, oh, maybe there's something, maybe there's something, maybe it's blogging, maybe it's, you know, helping other people write or which those are all things I still love, but nothing was just picking up. Like nothing was really tracking. So yeah, it was in that November that I was just like, okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> I was like, I think this is it. And it was just so, like, I think it's absolutely hilarious that I'm like, I was, I was giving up on creativity and my first instinct was to create something about giving up. And because I didn't write a poem after, like, I wrote that one and then I didn't end up writing again until after it got, like, viral on Pinterest and everything. So, so yeah. That was a moment. That was a moment. Because so you I was go just, back. I want to ask you this. That, so you, what you found was, is you kept your, your go-to that you kept on going back to was creativity. Yeah. And, and I think that's good to say because it took me a lot of years to figure this out. So we had multiple businesses by the time we were 30. Mm -hmm. And, but I kept on going back to, I love to, uh, my creative side is I like to flip houses and I like to renovate and make mm -hmm. things, old things new. But my dad was in construction and I remember telling him when I was, you know, 18 and I didn't have the Lord. I was really stupid. And I told him, I said, I will never be a stupid construction worker like you is mm -hmm. what I said. And he just laughed. And, but what I found was, is over the course of 10 years, 
And it didn't matter what business. We had a water bottling business. We had a health food store. We had a restaurant. Like we did all these things. But I would always go back to construction and flipping houses or remodeling mm-hmm. somebody's house wow. for free or just something. And it finally just dawned on me. It was like, I keep going back to this. But it was like, because I had said in my heart that I was never going to be, quote unquote, that stupid construction worker. And I was trying to prove it that I was going to do something else. I finally had to realize like, oh, I really do like this. Maybe I should stick with it and make a career out of it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that is so... (laughs) Wow. Like, yeah, it's amazing how we just end up coming back. And, and, you know, it's different for everyone. But, like, I just love how, like, like you and I have that in common of sense of, like, it was there. (laughs) Like, but it was like, oh, but maybe it's elsewhere. Actually, it's here. It's here. Um, and I just, I'm just like, you know, I'm seeing that. I feel like I'm seeing that more and more in my life because actually when I look at my parents, I can see how I'm like 21st century version of them in a lot of ways. Like yep. a lot of what they did and like their heart behind wanting to start a church and all of that, because I often feel that way. It's just like, I, I never, I always like struggle with like church leadership because I was just like, I don't really know if that's for me. Like that's for you guys, but that looks exhausting. Um, and I was just, yeah. I really struggled with that. And then now when I look what I, at what I do, it was so funny. I got an email from someone that said like, yeah, me and my friend, you know, we joke because we, we send, we send your posts to each other a lot. And we're like, Oh, what did Pastor Morgan have to say today? And I was like, Oh no, there's that word. <laughs> it was like, there's that church leader word. And I just thought that was so funny because I was just like, man, like, you know, I was just like, yeah, I, I, I was convinced that I'm, I'm like, yeah, I don't see myself in that way. You know, I was like, that's not for me. I don't have personality. I don't have the strength. I don't have the energy for all that, you know, the extroversion for all that. Cause I think that's like, like little caveat. I do think that there is like sort of an interesting thing. A lot of times, like in church culture, I found that as an introvert, sometimes it is really hard to find out like what leadership looks like. Cause at least for me, it was like, I saw a lot of like, like youth pastors and stuff who are just like really high energy. And I was just like, Oh, okay. Well, if you're not high energy, you just don't. Yeah, you know what? And I want to address that to so many people out there because you know, I've been in, in church for 20 years and I think that's such a lie. Like the yeah. whole time you've been talking the what I, the, I don't know why, but the, the, biblical character that keeps coming to my mind is Moses. You know, the whole time is like Moses constantly. He was like, he argued with God, which I love because people think like, I can't argue with God. Well, Moses did a great job at it. And he's Mm -hmm. just like, but I can't, but I can't. And God's like, okay, fine. Well, I'll give you Aaron. Or he's like, but I stutter, but I this. Mm -hmm. And, and I think in all that, we think we can't do stuff when in fact, God's like, I don't really care if you can or can't, I've called you to do it. And either you're going to step out or I'll bring somebody along to encourage you and to help you. But it's just really stepping out in faith and saying, um, like my words would be, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Like, I don't care. I'm going to fall on my face, but if that's what you yeah. call me, just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I'm kind of getting at that point now where I'm just like through all of the pitfalls and failures and, and, you know, $2 in the bank account moments. I'm like, for some reason, like, I keep coming back to this thing. Like, it keeps finding me. Like, this whole just, like, being with people and and essentially, like, ministering, even though that's not the word that, like, I want it to use. Yeah. It's just, like, God's, like, I don't care what word you want to use. Like, if, if you've been called to do it, like, you're going to end up going in that direction. So, yeah, I, I feel like I'm learning that more and more, and I feel like I'm kind of entering a new season now where it's like I've been in, you know, I've been kind of deep into, like, social media art worlds for a few years, and lately I've been getting asked to, to like, do more speaking, and, like, I just got asked to, like, teach, um, like, a creative class to, like, some young people who have just really been through tough things, and I was just like, whoa, like, I want to do that. Like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I kind of even see now, like, you know, it's a new decade and it's like a new, you know, I'm turning 30 again. So it's like a lot, two new decades, but, um, yeah, so it's very much so like, 
okay, that's probably about to happen again. Like I'm probably about to like feel really pushed. So, you know, I don't, I don't have easy answers for it. I don't have a step by step, but I'm like, I'm glad that I'm becoming more aware now of like, yeah, this is how life works. It's like you're given things and, and you're, and you're, and it's up to you to decide, like, do I want to water this and be faithful? And even in that faithfulness, though, it's like you can't just rely on, like, your security blanket and, and what makes you comfortable. It's like even in, like, faithfulness is not about, like, comfort. Like, you still have to push beyond that. So that's where I am right now. And I'm, like, writing about that a lot more. And, yeah, I'm... I'm Talking about writing, that's a good that. segue, is now... Yeah. You got a book that's out, correct? All, uh, yes. All along yes. you were blooming? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. Yes. So tell me about that. So, um, as I've mentioned several times already, I like I, I write on Instagram a lot, and I share a lot on social media, which, which I love. Um, however, there have been many times, like even when I'm writing to people um, via email or messaging or whatever, where it's like, oh, I just kind of want to go a little bit further and go a little bit deeper. Um, however, just, you know, the nature of those platforms, everything's so quick. So, you know, a lot of what I share on social media, it's just meant to be like the equivalent of you just like driving by a billboard and just like happening to see like something. Um, so what's in this book is just like, literally the words I kind of just went back and looked at some words that I had written, but I hadn't shared. And I was like, I think these words like kind of belong in a book, like something that someone can hold in their hands, you know, a little differently than maybe just scrolling through. So that was how I wrote the book because I, I didn't know I'm still learning how to like curate and like create a narrative with my work and all of that. So I was just like, I don't know. I honestly don't know what to do. I was like, but I had this opportunity to write a book a publisher. It reached out um, over Instagram and I was so grateful that they found me and I was like, well, you know, I got to figure out some way to do this because, because now, you know, I, I signed a contract. I can't back out. Like I got to deliver a book. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this just by looking through what I've already started working on, what I've already written. And I was just like, yeah, this is where I go deeper. So that's, that's what the book is. Um, visually, it looks very similar to what I've kind of been sharing already with lots of artwork. Um, <clears throat> what kind of artwork? I'm curious. Yeah, so I um, um, I create my artwork on my iPad Pro, okay. and that started from just honestly, I, as I started writing these poems for people, I was just like, I was like, see images in my head. I'm like, I'm talking about mountains and valleys. I'm like, I just feel like mountains and valleys should be in it. So I just started experimenting. Um, I have a YouTube video education on in terms of like YouTube tutorial education of just like how to use certain brushes, and how to download brushes. And yeah, so the, for the past three years, I've just been experimenting. So lots of, lots of nature. I would say that's kind of like a core, a core um, place where I like to start because similar to what we've been talking about, about like just like the things we have in common, despite the differences in our story. I'm like, we all in some capacity, like when you say mountain or river or flower, like most people, something comes to mind, you know, it's like whether you've actually even seen a mountain or not, like you have some sort of concept of that. Um, And I like that. Like I like to use a lot of um, nature images that also have a lot of like spiritual um, like connotations that people might think of, like just something, you know, looking to the hills um, like sometimes just seeing that, seeing those hills can give someone hope. So I think about that a lot as I, um, as I create. So yeah, lots of nature. Um, there's a few, uh, pieces in there where I really, and I don't really share this much on Instagram and I feel like I'm doing it more in the book where just like, I kind of just highlighted ordinary things. Like I have like, um, a piece that's talking about like setting the table for others and making room for others. And it's just like a, very like modest dining room table with like some very modest chairs because I think in an age of like, you know, if you look at most social media platforms, if someone shares a picture of their home, if it's going to get likes, it needs to look like a million dollar home, you know? And I just can't help but think about like myself included, 
I'm like, so many times, like, I don't even feel like I can invite people over because I'm like, well, I'm not done decorating. Like, this chair doesn't match that chair. Yeah, like, hey, this, yeah, this wall's still bare. We need to paint it. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, no, like, that's not what it's about. Like, it's the ordinary. It's the the walls that aren't painted. It's and what I've been noticing now, like, trying to practice more, like, inviting people over. I'm like, I think in a way, like, it's the imperfections and it's the the things like that that make it feel like a home and make people feel like, you know, they belong. So, yeah, lots of just little little images and, yeah. <laughs> it's funny listening to you tell that. So, I go into, I've literally been into hundreds and hundreds of houses just oh, yeah, that's with your right. remodels. Yeah. And it's just funny because every woman says the same thing. Mm. Like, my wife is OCD. Our house is like immaculate. You could eat off our floor, which I laugh. And still, <laughs> people will come over to our house and she's like, but it's dirty and the conditions <laughs> are out of place or something. But yeah. every woman says the same thing. Every house I go to, they always say, Excuse me for the mess. I'm so sorry, but you know, like, I don't care. I'm a guy. I promise. Yeah, yeah. It's very. It is so. It is so interesting how how that happens. I think a lot of it just comes from like that pressure because you know you're taught as a kid like keep your room clean, all this stuff, and it's like yeah, but it, that's it's like when you're grown up, like it's just it's different, you know, it's, it's, it's more complex. So uh, yeah, it's funny how many people say that yeah, it's myself, myself included. I've, I've said it this week. So, um, so Morgan, <laughs> there's, as we wrap up the show, there's two questions. Um, I've never got the opportunity to ask this question. So I'm curious oh. as you were growing up being a pastor's kid, um, mm-hmm. you, so you grew up quote unquote in the faith, as you said, <laughs> air quotes, right <laughs> up in it. But I'm curious at some point, did you have to find your own faith? Because I think I've seen a lot of pastors' kids grow up, they either are rebellious or they really struggle with finding their own faith because you can't live your parents' faith because you don't have your parents' experience. Mm-hmm. Was that a struggle for you, I'm curious? And did you have to find that after you left your parents' house? Yeah, I think it's something that I'm that I'm – always finding in the sense of like I don't feel like I've arrived at the point of just like this is what my faith means to me you know number one number two number three number four like I'm still I'm like it is definitely a journey for me and looking at like huh like okay that's that's interesting or oh I need to dig deeper into that like even a lot of my artwork is digging deeper into that because I write a lot about grace and I found myself at a point where I was just like I was I just used the word grace and like somebody was like what's that even mean and I was like hey you know what I've never really spent a lot of time thinking about that (laughs) and now I'm I'm writing through that process because I'm like I can't possibly like sum up grace in a few words like so it's yeah so it's a journey and I think for me, though, I I kind of had a very, um, I didn't know that there were other, until I got to college, I didn't know that there were other preachers, kids out there that um, went to churches where they, like, maybe, like, bigger, larger churches where, like, they had other kids who they had things in common with our church was very small and in a community where a lot of people that came were not like regular church goers so a lot of my peers because I was homeschooled so I wasn't seeing like a ton of kids all the time most of the kids that I saw on a daily basis were kids who honestly were just coming to church because somebody was making them come to church and they weren't and it wasn't it wasn't a very church culture type environment. So I think because of that, I was I was kind of like forced, my sister and I both, to really figure out what it meant for us because like we didn't fit in with our peers. And so there was like like a specific example would be like, you know, my parents were very like intentional about like and my mom is still this way now. She's like, kids should watch kid TV shows. Like, that's just what, that's age appropriate. And kids should watch kid shows. And there would be times where, like, someone would mention a show that wasn't a kid show. And we'd say, oh, we don't, we don't watch that. Well, why not? And it was just. <laughs> and then you guys had the questions, well, why, why this don't was I? every single week of my childhood. So yeah. I think, 
I, you know, maybe other people know that too, you know? And, and for me, I'm like, that's what it was. Like, I had to, like, figure it out in real time. And I'm like, well, you know, kids should watch kids shows. What does that mean? Well, um, <laughs> so my kids, you could have some great conversations with my oldest daughter. And my son, they'll tell you the same thing. They still yeah, laugh at Thanksgiving and stuff like that. They're like, mom wouldn't let us watch this. Or yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you can yeah. now, but there was a reason because we were trying to develop some stuff before, yeah. you got, before the yeah. TV it's... developed you. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a real-time thing that's that's still going on in, in many ways. Okay. All right, so last question as we wrap up the show. Um, Morgan, you get to go back to the younger you. Um, I usually ask for you to pick an age, but maybe let's say early twenties. I'm just curious mm-hmm. because of stepping into what you've done the last 10 years. What would you tell the younger you if you were to go back? What advice would you give yourself knowing like, Hey, I got 10 years experience now. Let me tell you how this is going to play out. Mm-hmm. Um, you, now you can't change anything, but you're just yeah. going to give yourself a pet talk. Maybe you're going to write yourself a poem or yeah. a song or something. <laughs> what does that look like? Oh, yeah. Hmm. So my early 20s, I still, you know, I, I wasn't really confident the way I wanted to, that, that maybe like I was desiring to be, but I still had this desire to create and make things. And the biggest word that comes for me in that season is, is just faithfulness. It's just like stay faithful to, you know, from, on a creative side, just like stay faithful to the craft and just exploring. And, and it's not bad to explore. Like, I think I would say to her, like, don't be ashamed of like trying different things. And I think a lot of when I would like create a random blog or something, I wouldn't tell people because I was like, oh, they're going to look at me and think, oh, here she is starting another thing. Um, So I would hold back a lot. And I would just tell her, like, don't hold back. Like, you're allowed to, like, try things. Like, it's not irresponsible to try a different Instagram page that could possibly help someone like you're gonna learn from it even if it is a falling apart in in a few weeks and you it, you spend 10 hours or five hours of your life doing it like you learned from it so I would tell her to be proud and like be proud that you're even curious and that you're even willing to explore and try things and and you know don't let the lack of traditional success or some industries metrics of success stop you from trying and being faithful to what you feel you've been called to do. So. Amen to that, man. That's good. Okay. So Morgan, how do we find you on Instagram uh, uh, for our listeners that want to check out your music, your art? I do want to throw in a plug. uh, And I might've said at the beginning of the show, but it's been an hour. So I forgot. (laughs) But one of my all time favorite songs is storyteller uh, that Morgan sings. It's been on my, um, iPod on my playlist um, mm-hmm. with a lot of other artists. I listen to it probably a couple times a week. And mm-hmm. I just want to say this. I haven't just cried, but I have literally wept listening to that song because of the goodness of how much I think when we grow up, we don't realize like the whole time God has always been there. We just haven't mm-hmm. always recognized him or uh, um, seen him there, but he's always been there. And I just want to say to our listeners, I highly recommend uh, that song. So I hope you get a huge spike in listens. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. But um, oh, but that being said, you. absolutely, yeah. Morgan. How do we find you? Yeah, so I'm Morgan Harper Nichols. I know it's kind of long, but if you just start typing in like Morgan Harper, it's stuff starts usually showing up on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook. Um, Morgan H. Nichols on Twitter. And then if you're interested in my music, it's on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, also as Morgan Harper Nichols and yeah, Storyteller. And then the book, um, same thing, type Morgan Harper Nichols on Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Um, you'll see all along you are blooming. So yeah, I'm Morgan and thank you guys so much. Awesome. Okay. You get the last word, piece of advice oh. for the audience. So you gave yourself a pep talk. Yes. Last piece of advice for the audience as you leave. Yeah, so um, one word that really comes up for me right now is focus. 
and look around the room that you're literally in right now or the space that you literally live in right now like what projects what things what relationships can you focus on developing and just trust that going deeper into that whatever it is going deeper into that you are going to grow from that place and you'll be surprised at just how much richness there is um, and just how much grace will meet you there in that place so so yeah focus awesome <laughs> all right morgan thank you so much for coming on if you'll hold on just a second as i close up Roar Nation, I hope you got a lot of uh, meat out of that. I just want to inspire you. It doesn't matter what age you are, especially if you're listening to the show and you're younger and you feel discouraged. Um, Morgan talked very openly about that. I remember being there. And the, the word that comes to my mind is stay the course mm-hmm. and just keep going after your dreams and don't worry about being the next quote unquote, overnight success or all those things that the world you feel like you have to live up to because it doesn't matter because God put something, I like to say God put gold in you and it's our job to refine it and just get it out and share it with the world. So I just encourage you to dig deep, find that gold, share it with the world. If you need help or you have any questions, please reach out to us, uh, Casey and myself at Are You Real? and uh, go to our uh, website or our Facebook and would love to share and to help you guys on your journey. So love y'all. Remember, be real, be authentic, and be you. God bless. That's all for this episode of Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You. Be sure to go to areyoureal.org for your free questionnaire to identify your gifts and talents and how you can use them to help people become leaders and catapult them into their destiny to help others become the leaders of tomorrow. We appreciate you spending your time with us and look forward to helping you reach out and revolutionize next time on Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You.